Hello everyone. Today we're gonna discuss uh, water balance. Uh, so water balance is um, the inflow and outflow of um, water into the hydrological system. Uh, and there's a complex elements to that uh, water balance equation. Uh, today we're gonna use a more simplistic um, um, approach where we'll um, um, subtract evapotranspiration outflow um, of water from the system and precipitation inflow of um, water into the system and we're going to use a satellite based measurement of precipitation and evapotranspiration to quantify uh, net water um, um, especially in across uh, time and we're going to use the chirps um, uh, data climate hazard uh, group infrared precipitation station data uh, so this data uh, is available um, from uh, 1981 to um, 2024 and updated frequently. And so we're going to use also the evapotranspiration data, a mod um, 16A2 data. And so this will, uh, the data will help us to quantify evapotranspiration. And so we're going to use... Um, you know the monthly times here is to quantify uh, water balance or net water uh, in the system and so evapotranspiration is um, both a combination of water loss um, from the soil which is evaporation and transpiration um, uh, is water loss from the uh, water system like lakes river and the ocean so evapotranspiration a combination of evaporation and transpiration um, so yeah let's get started and by the end of the tutorial we're gonna generate a special map of the water balance net water um, balance in the system across space and also we're gonna generate um, a time series um, uh, showing the net water balance um, um, amount at the monthly temporal scale all right so let's get started so the first thing is um, I usually like to import um, study area in this case uh, we're gonna use a global data um, so we're using the Google Earth Engine code editor um, to run our analysis here on the cloud and we're gonna uh, import this uh, boundary data uh, this is a uh, worded uh, you know country's boundary we're gonna use uh, the you know Rwanda for for this uh, example it's a, it's a small uh, uh, you know country in Africa and so we're going to filter that by country na which means country name and then write the country name and adjust the map center object to um, change the zoom label that way it's going to focus into um, over our study area and we're going to change this into a satellite or a google map uh, it really doesn't matter okay so next thing is um, we're going to add this um, as um, another layer here just to visualize the steady site we're going to execute that here um, so this is our study area we're going to quantify you know precipitation and evapotranspiration for this study area and once we have our study region um, we're going to import the image collection but before that let's define you know, our timestamp, what timestamp are we gonna use for this analysis? So we're gonna have a start year, which uh, I would say 2015 for this example. And then end year is the last year that I would like to run this, um, um, uh, you know, uh, water balance analysis 2022. And um, so, and then we're gonna say a date, um, we're gonna have, you know two dates um, we have uh, defined our year start year and in uh, end year and we're gonna need a date a specific date um, um, you know for th the timestamp to start so we're gonna use ee date for Earth engine uh, date and then we'll use a start year and then one and one so and we're gonna use the same here but then we'll advance uh, one um, so technically uh, it will it will advance like each day so 
uh, and the other thing is we're gonna need um, the number of the total number of years we're gonna save that as a list so start year and end year e e list sequence which is technically 2015 and 2022 um, we're gonna have um, all the years between uh, 2015 and 2022 so this is a list that stores the year um, um, and then we're gonna pull that in our analysis later okay so next um, we are gonna also create a month uh, a list that stores the months so uh, 1 to 12 all the months here so that's the months then the years and we have our start um, date and also start year uh, and then next let's uh, import our chips data which is um, this one here so we're gonna use this image collection from you know the earth engine data catalog um, and so and we're gonna also filter you know the chirps data um, by the start date and end date um, so total um, you know starting from 2015 to 2022 and also let's import the modis um, um, evapotranspiration data and uh, we're gonna use the ET evapotranspiration uh, we have to select that specific parameter and also the same here uh, precipitation and and we're gonna also filter by date uh, like the the precipitation data here we're gonna filter evapotranspiration again and the next important piece of function is uh, we're gonna write um, a function that does calculate the water balance so what we're doing here is um, we're technically so this is our water balance uh, function uh, you know that uh, pulls the image collection and also for each year and then for each month uh, it will um, you know calculate um, so technically calculate a monthly uh, for each year it will calculate a monthly uh, you know precipitation here so the first parameter is the precipitation where we have the chirps data here this is the image collection which we already defined here um, and then we're gonna uh, call that and then filter that and uh, we're gonna filter by year and also by months and uh, apply a sum uh, a reducer so what this does is uh, it will calculate a monthly total rainfall uh, for each year and then again, we also need to calculate evapotranspiration at a monthly scale. Again, here we have the year and the months, and then um, the total amount uh, sum. That means total ET, a monthly ET. Uh, this is a scale factor uh, multiplied by 0 0.1. Um, and so now we have precipitation here, and then we have evapotranspiration here. So to calculate you know, water balance, we're going to subtract P, which is precipitation, and subtract ET here, uh, evapotranspiration, at a monthly scale. And we're going to, this will generate a default name, so we're going to rename that into water balance. You can name it differently, but just uh, so, so that we can remember this name, I'll say water balance. So WB um, um, is our water balance parameter here, and then return wb that means water balance and then also um, um, this is a new uh, uh, product that we've calculated then we're gonna um, also associate uh, you know the timestamp you know the start date month year um, uh, for this uh, product that way we're gonna when we plot it uh, or just export it as a csv we're gonna have this timestamp um, the months the year whatnot okay and that will be it so this is our function to calculate a monthly uh, water balance based on precipitation and ET. Um, and uh, before we, we, we run uh, other graphics, let's actually, uh, you know, just map it specially. We're gonna, you know, map it specially as well as uh, do a time series chart here. So let's create a visualization parameter here to map it specially. Uh, so a minimum and maximum value here, 0 to 100. This depends on your study area. If you have a larger study area, you might have more, you know, larger um, maximum value. But for my study, 
Um, in this example, you know, 0 to 100 data values um, is enough. And then I'll define a different colors for the variable. So a blue would be for high values and red would be, you know, lower where balance value. And then finally, let's uh, map add layer uh, to map our, uh, you know, wire balance. And so this is, so we're going to have this for long time series, a monthly water balance. But if we generate a mean, this is for the entire time series, a mean value uh, of water balance. Technically, it will show special variation in terms of water availability or water balance, um, precipitation versus evapotranspiration dynamics on the landscape. So, and we're gonna clip it by origin of interest and, you know, balance visualization is this, the, the, you know, the, the parameter, um, the visualization parameter we've created. Let's go ahead and execute this code, which will give us um, the water balance um, spa at a special scale over a long time, uh, time series. So as you can see here, uh, you know, so the, the water balance, technically what we're seeing is just, um, uh, you know, moisture availability on the ground. Um, if we have, you know, blue color and whatnot, if it's red color, uh, pretty, um, you know, dry um, uh, area, and also yellow is a more medium um, in terms of water availability or, you know, water balance equation. Um, so technically, uh, you know, if we um, if we have um, a precipitation and that precipitation is not lost by evapotranspiration and that's um, you know moist area, and if we have precipitation and lost um, lost that um, uh, from evaporation or transpiration, then it's a dry area, and that, that's really important for different applications. Um, you know, be it from agriculture and, you know, uh, you know, various applications. So, you know, water consumption and whatnot, uh, you know, for, for different purpose, you know, drinking water, you know, irrigation and what have you. And, and so we have, we've done some special, you know, mapping of, you know, water balance. Now let's just do a time series of the water balance um, by, uh, technically creating a chart so we're gonna um, what we're gonna have here is just let's get a title um, of um, our x-axis y-axis and also you know the, the, the title uh, we'll call it you know water balance and you know the months is the x-axis and the y-axis is rainfall minus et that's what we what we have done and let's actually uh, finally do the chart which is this one we're going to use UI, user interface chart image series by region. So this is going to generate a time series um, uh, for our monthly time series based on a region of interest here, um, our ROI. And yeah, let's just go ahead and execute that uh, and then see what our chart is here. So this is our time series chart um, showing the water balance, uh, you know, higher values. Uh, uh, more water availability and then negative values, uh, you know, um, pretty um, scarce water availability or w a lot of water loss from evaporation or transpiration. And so this is how, uh, and then the, the x-axis is, uh, you know, months uh, starting from 2015 to 2022. And the y-axis is uh, the net change, um, um, you know, calculated from by subtracting uh, ET or evapotranspiration from precipitation. Uh, so that's how you, um, you know, compute a water balance based on precipitation and uh, evapotranspiration using Earth Engine and uh, satellite-derived, um, you know, product at a monthly scale and um, at a special scale for, for any given region.